Swifter. In this video, we're going to learn to deal with complex JSON, specifically nested JSON and JSON arrays. Giddy up. All right, Swifter, I hope there are blue skies wherever you are. So this is where we're headed in the next two videos. You can see that we have a table view here that holds a week's worth of weather for each location. And as I swipe left or right, you see that that weather changes. So we can see several days of forecast data for each location. Now you see a table view and a table view implies an array. So we'll need to create an array to hold what you see in this table view. Each element of the array will be a struct. So we'll create a custom struct and it'll hold this daily weather data that you see here. And the struct will contain an icon name, the weekday, a daily weather summary, and a projected high and low temperature. Now, the table view has a custom class, and you can tell because this user interface is much more complex than we would get from any of the iOS built-in table view cells like basic or subtitle. And while weather data is going to contain an array of this new daily weather struct, we're going to define it outside of the weather data class. And this is so that we can actually use that data structure inside of our custom table view cell. Now we're going to work together on getting the daily weather here, but you want to pay attention to how we set this up because at some point in another couple of videos, there's going to be a challenge for you to get hourly data as well. And we're going to show this in a horizontally scrolling collection view. Now we haven't worked with arrays of JSON before, but it's not too difficult. Let's get to work. Let's start by looking at the JSON. Well, we've already got data from nested JSON. That's what we did with current. And we've already dealt with an array. Remember the weather that we had here? This is an array, but it was an array of just one element. So all we accessed was element zero. Well, to get the daily weather forecast for each day, we're just gonna access multiple elements of this structure. And let's take a look at daily. Now you wanna make sure that you understand how we're getting the daily array, because you're gonna to have to do the same thing to get the hourly array in a future challenge when we get hourly data. That's in a few videos. But right here, when we look at daily, we can see that it's an array, see the square brackets, and we can collapse and expand each element as well with these little triangles on the left. And if we look at just one of these daily elements, what we wanna filter out here is DT. Now this is a Unix date. It represents each day of the weather forecast, but we already know how to convert Unix date to regular date, so we're good there. Then we've got min and max, which is the min and max temperature for each day, the description, and the icon. So those are the four values we want, and we'll get those values for each element in daily, representing the different forecasts for each day. Now DT is at the top level, no problem, but min and max are nested JSON. See how they're one level in here? So we're gonna have to create a separate data structure to get one level deep inside of this temp, and then inside temp, we're gonna access min and max. And the description and icon are inside of this weather array. It's just one element, but we've already done this for current when we got the icon and description for the current weather. And since the weather array in daily is structured exactly like the weather array in current, we can just reuse the data structure that's already in our code. So here's how we're gonna set this up. We're gonna need a data structure named daily to hold elements of the daily array. Now daily will then be added as a property of result. So we'll now filter this out. This is what the struct being codable does. It lets us use it in our JSON decoder to sort of pour the JSON into containers that fit the specific elements of the data that we want. Now this daily has also gotta have a struct named temp to be able to get one level deep and to get at the temperature data, the min and the max in here. So we'll declare a struct down here as capital temp. And then we'll create a property named lowercase temp inside of our daily struct so that each element of the daily array will be able to get into temp to be able to get the min and the max. And then daily also needs to get into this weather array. Remember the one element array? But again, this is the same struct that we had used in current in our previous video. So since we've already defined this in our code, we can just add a property named weather, which is an array of weather inside of our daily struct. One more thing, at the end of the last section, we learned about private to create a private function that was only visible inside the class. Well, we're adding private to these structs here that are only used to decode our JSON. Now these guys won't be visible outside of the class since we'll take the stuff that we decode and then pass them to single properties that aren't private. And we do that so we don't have to dig multiple layers deep just to get to a single value. And this is what we're doing here. Daily weather is a data structure that will hold an element of a class property here named daily weather data. And that's an array of this daily weather. Now we also declare daily weather outside of the class because we're going to reuse this data structure when we create a custom table view cell in our next video. Also, I mentioned earlier that in a previous version of this tutorial, we used another API, Dark Sky, and Dark Sky's API was different, but keeping the class properties the same, we just had to go into the private data, which was structured differently, map that to the externally visible properties in our code, and we didn't need to change any code outside of this single class file. So that's the magic of MVC. You can swap out the data source, and if done right, you only need to touch a single file in your project. 
So back in our code, make sure that you're in weatherdetail.swift. And when creating data structures to parse JSON, it can be useful to work from the innermost level out. This way you're defining any data structures before you need to declare properties of that type. So what's our innermost level? Temp. So right here we'll say struct capital temp, colon, codable, open and close curly, var max colon double, var min colon double. Then just above that, we can define a daily struct to hold the elements of our daily array. So we'll say struct, capital daily, colon codable. This is also decoding JSON, so we need that. Open and close curlies, then var dt colon time interval, just like the Unix time interval we had up here, but this is a different value because this is gonna hold the time for the individual days of our forecast. Then var temp colon capital temp, that's the data structure we created down below. Then we need to get at the description and the icon, but those are inside of a weather struct that's identical to the weather struct we created up here. So we could just say var weather colon, and remember this is that weird one element array. So we'll just say bracket capital weather bracket. And now that we have our daily data structure defined and our temp data structure inside of that, we can go back up here to result and add an array of that daily struct so that we can go ahead and get the forecast for each day. So right under result before the last curly, I'll say var lower uppercase daily colon, and then in square brackets, because this is an array, uppercase daily, that data structure we just defined. Then let's scroll down into our get data method into our do clause. Now, just to show you, at this point, we've got everything parsed into the structs we just created. And I'll show you this in a print statement. So we can enter just below where we set our daily icon, print. And just to make it easy to find, I'll do triple star and all caps daily weather array, then string interp result.daily build and run. So far, everything we want to look at is in the console, but hey, we can see our triple star and we've got an array here for each day that we got a daily forecast for. Nice. These different DT values are the different Unix dates, so we'll make those into Apple format dates, but this is looking good. Now, unfortunately, we do need to parse out each of the individual elements in this array. That's because we've got to convert the Unix date into the day of the week, and we've got to take the doubles that are our max and our min temperatures and convert those to integers. So we'll create another data structure. We'll call that daily weather, and that will hold elements of this parsed and converted array that we just got from the JSON. And I'm going to declare that up here outside of the class. Normally we do this in a separate file, but for convenience, I'll just put it here so we can reference it as we're modifying our code. The reason why it's outside of the class is because we're going to use this data structure again in another file when we create our custom table view cell in the next video. So we'll define this as struct upper camel case daily weather, and we've already decoded JSON into another data structure. We're not going to do that in this one, so we don't need codable. Open and close curlies, var daily icon colon string, var daily weekday colon string, var daily summary colon string, var daily high colon int, and var daily low colon int. And now that we've got this structure created, we need to create a class-wide property that's going to be an array to hold this. So we'll scroll down to our other class-wide properties, and just underneath where we declare the daily icon, I'm going to type in var daily weather data is what I'll call this, lower camel case, colon, and then in brackets, the upper camel case daily weather, which we just created, equals, and then we're going to start out with an empty array, so that's just open and close square bracket. Then down in our do catch clause where we've decoded our JSON, I'm going to get rid of this print statement. I don't need it anymore. We already know we decoded our data into result.daily, so that's good. And so now just after our daily icon, let's create a loop that's going to go through and transform the data in our daily array so that it's in the correct format that we want. And after we've transformed the elements of the data into the format that we want, we'll append those collectively as an element of the daily weather data array. So we'll say for index in zero dot dot less than sign result dot daily and look code completion knows that lowercase daily is an array of uppercase daily and we want to go through all of these elements so we'll say dot count open and close curlies then we'll say let and you know what I was going to call this daily icon and I still want to call it daily icon in here but since we've used that name I think we should actually change this name up here daily icon so instead I'm going to highlight the daily icon up here where it's self dot daily icon just above the for loop and I'm going to right click and do a refactor rename and I'm going to rename this one day icon then down below we've got let and then I can use the now unique name daily icon down here equals and watch how we get the data in here we'll say result dot daily 
bracket index bracket. So that gets us into the element of the daily array. Then we want to get the value for icon, which is inside of this one element weather array. So we're going to do the same thing we did up here when we got our day icon. We'll say dot weather bracket zero bracket dot icon. That'll get us the string we want. Well, I should say almost the string we want. What we want to do now is we want to convert the dark sky coded icon name to the corresponding name for the image that we have in our asset catalog just like we did up here for our day icon. So on the first line I wrote inside of our for loop, I'm going to highlight result.daily index weather zero icon, cut it out with a command X, then I'll say self.filename for icon, there's our private function, select that with return, and I'll paste in what I just cut out here. That'll take the dark sky JSON, and daily icon now has the exact name of the file that we want to show for the weather condition that's inside of the open weather icon code. Then we want to get the description of that day's weather forecast. So we'll put that in a variable we'll call daily summary. Let daily summary equals, and it's also inside of that one element weather array. So we'll say result dot daily bracket index bracket dot weather bracket zero bracket dot description. Then we'll get each forecast day max and min temperature. So we'll say let daily high equals result dot daily bracket index bracket dot temp dot max. Then I'll highlight this line, copy it, paste it below, change daily high to daily low, and change max to min. And now we'll use all these constants that we created to create an instance of daily weather, and then we'll append that to our daily weather data array. So we'll say let lower camel case daily weather equals upper camel case daily weather open parentheses so that we get our initializer in here. For daily icon, we'll pass in daily icon. For daily weekday, we still need to convert the Unix date that we got up here. So for now, I'll just put in an empty string. Daily summary equals daily summary. Daily high is daily high, and daily low is daily low. Now notice the complaint that we have here, and we knew this was coming. Xcode says, hey, daily high is a double, but the daily high inside of daily weather is an int. Do you want me to fix it? No, because I want to round it before I convert it to an int. I'll do that up here. After max, I'll just say dot rounded, open and close parens. I'll do the same for dot min. And then I'll just convert these whole values to int with int in parentheses. And the error goes away. Nice. Now I'll append this value to my daily weather data. So I'll say self.dailyweatherdata.append and pass in the daily weather constant I just created. Now let's convert the Unix date to a weekday. So we'll start that process up here right underneath the for loop. I'll say let weekday date equals and then capital date for the date type open parenthesis. Remember, we want to select this one time interval since 1970. And what we'll pass in there will be result dot daily bracket index bracket dot DT. Then down below, we want to leverage our date formatter. Of course, we haven't created a date formatter that pulls out just the weekday from the date yet. But you know what we could do? Let's scroll up to the top and let's reuse the date formatter that we've already created for location detail view controller. And we'll just change the format string. So I'll make some space here, head over to location detail view controller, highlight the entire date formatter, copy it, head back to weatherdetail.swift, paste it in, and just to distinguish this date formatter from the other date formatter, I'm going to paste in two more calendar emojis. And I'm going to highlight weatherdetail.swift. And down here in my print string, I'll say, I just created a date formatter in paste in weatherdetail.swift. And now all we need to do is change this date format property of the date formatter. All we want are the four capital letter E's because that'll just give us the weekday, which is all we want to show in the table view cells. So I'll backspace over everything except those four capital E's. Now let's head back down into the for loop and finish formatting our date. So first we need to set the date formatter time zone property. So for date formatter dot, we'll say lower camel case time zone equals Upper camel case time zone, open parens. We want to select the option with the identifier. We already parsed out the time zone identifier. That's result.timezone. We did that in the previous video. Down below, we'll do our final string formatting. We'll say let daily weekday equals date formatter dot string. We'll select the from option here and we'll pass in weekday date which is our valid Apple date. The date formatter should now peel out just the weekday. I'm going to copy daily weekday, and I'm going to paste it down over the empty string that I had, passing it in as the daily weekday parameter when we create an instance of daily weather. Then we'll finish off this video by making sure that we can print out the results we're getting from the JSON, and they're in the format we expect. So we'll say print in between parens, in between double quotes, we'll say day colon string interp comma high colon string interp comma low colon string interp and what we'll pass in there will be daily weekday daily high and daily low let's build and run 
Well, and let me stop that execution because I'd also mentioned we wanted to go down here and put private in front of these structs. Again, we don't have to do that, but it's good software engineering practice because we're not going to refer to these outside of this class. So just like we did in the previous video where we put private in front of our function file name for icon, we're doing the same thing here for our structs. These are the ones that we're using to decode our JSON. Everything is all set up, so let's continue to build and run. And here we go. No errors. Build succeed. Hammer time. And ho ho, look at the console down here for Chad. That's our currently bogus current location at Latitude Longitude 2020. We've got multiple days of weather forecasts. It's going to be toasty and in the 100s in Chad. Let's swipe. So we got weather for Gonzaga. Swipe again, Georgia Tech. Oh, I didn't have a good image for Thunderstorm. This looks pretty ugly. I'll have to find a good one. Stay safe, Georgia Tech. San Francisco State. Swipe to Boston College. And the next week, it's going to be summer balmy here in luxurious Chestnut Hill. From the low 80s to the mid 70s as our high. Swifter, you did a great job parsing out arrays of JSON data. Hope you're feeling skilled. Next video, let's get this data into a table view. Keep at it.